Hey there YouTube, I'm Jack and this is Raw Tropical Living. Thanks for joining me today. Joined again by Amanda here. We're just trying to get some videos in. She's got to make a trip down to Florida for a couple of weeks uh, this next week. So we're doing videos today. So we're going to get right to it. Today we're talking about uh, body image issues and how it relates to a raw food diet. Um, Amanda had brought up something in one of our former videos and that one had just kind of stuck in my head and I thought it would be a good angle to explore. So. Guys, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please go down and hit the subscribe button now. Then click on the little bell and check send notifications so you'll stay subscribed to the channel. And I'm going to go ahead and say that by the time this one comes out, there will be a link in the description below for Amanda's channel. Because she finally got her, uh, her introduction video done and she's worked all that stuff out. So by the time this video comes out, there will definitely be a link to her channel below. So go follow her. Uh, Amanda, we were just talking a little bit about this kind of stuff. You had mentioned uh, body image issues uh, in one of the videos that we talked about, I think mm -hmm. relating to weight or just the raw food diet in general. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, just kind of tell your story, I guess. I don't have a lot, I don't really have body image issues. I don't know a lot about the subject. So I guess just kind of tell your story and what you've experienced or the issues you've had. Yeah, I think it's uh, really common for women to experience body image issues but i i also don't think that it's um super rare for guys to experience that either i've had uh quite a few men tell me things like that different points in their life they thought that they needed to look actually a little bit like cartoon characters like some kind of right. superhero kind of built with like that upside down triangle right. kind of look <laughs> um and i've definitely dated some people who i think were going for that <laughs> Um, as a woman, I know, especially, honestly, I think it was about eighth grade for me when people started noticing my butt. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really where it all started. Up until that point, I was like, never gave it a thought, which I think for a lot of women, especially if they develop faster than I did, it could easily start in like fourth and fifth grade. If you're developing young, I think that there's certain things that people start noticing and it kind of stands out. And I would imagine if I were in that position that it would have started much younger for me. Uh, but for me, it was really eighth grade. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm Caucasian, I'm white. And everyone used to tell me that I had a really big ass. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that really what they meant was that it was a little bit like rounder for a white girl. But like, all I kept hearing was big ass. <laughs> And they would just say it like it was this like monstrous thing. And it was usually meant as a compliment as far as I could tell. But I was not about to take it as a compliment because I was just like, that's just not good. I don't want a big butt. <laughs> um, so it kind of started there. And I started sort of comparing... Uh, like pant sizes that I was wearing to like my friends or asking questions about that or paying more attention to what people were saying their weight was and then like visually I mean like checking people out basically and trying to compare uh, what I thought I looked like to them compared to what they said their weight was which honestly at this point some of them I totally think told the truth and then some I'm, I'm not really sure that they were telling the truth but I didn't really realize that then. I didn't understand why somebody would lie about that. Because right. I, I felt like everybody can see what you look like regardless of what that number is. Which is funny because in a way I've come full circle to that a little bit. Um, since I don't weigh myself anymore. Yeah, I've never understood that lying mm -hmm. about the weight. Because you've got a visual right in front <laughs> of you anyway. So <laughs> Yeah, you're going to look how you look whatever that number is. So right. if it's a ton of muscle then you're going to look a certain way. And if it's a ton of not muscle you're going to look a certain way right. and and that's just that whatever the actual number is so uh, so that's really where it started and I think that it just sort of progressed and and became a lot worse in high school uh, it developed a lot more in high school I realized that I very much got attention based on appearance in a lot of situations and I definitely used that to my advantage. I also definitely focused on that because it felt like that was the thing that people were paying the most attention to. And I do think that was accurate. I honestly, as a teenage female, um, you heard things like, oh, you're beautiful all the time and less about like, oh, how are your grades? Or 
oh, what are you doing in terms of your hobbies or how right. are you developing yourself? Um, I, when, when you enter graduation time, there is that discussion of like what college you're going to, which is great. I think that's progress. Uh, women used to not go to college at all, but, uh, but it, it was usually like the leading comment was about how beautiful you were, how you looked or what you were wearing. And that coupled with, uh, I, I read a lot of like kind of magazines around that time. I think there was one called like 17 and I started reading that probably when I was like 15 or 14 <laughs> and like Cosmo, which also talked a lot about sex and, you know, even before I had had sex, I was like reading articles like that and kind of basing assumptions in my head off of what I thought maybe guys expected or what I thought other women did a lot of or something. Um, as a 32 year old now, I look back on that and I'm like, God, nobody really lives <laughs> life like that. That was insane. But that's what I kind of thought reality was. Cause I didn't, I didn't have anything else to base it off of. Um, I also had a unique situation where my parents separated and, and divorced around that time while I was in high school and, uh, my two sisters as well. And that, so there was like a, a lot of change going on and a lot of confusion. And uh, I think that it took some of the teenage confusion and kind of amplified that. Um, it just, everything is already kind of scary as a teenager and, and that sort of amplified it. And it's nobody's fault, you know, I love my mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that, that was just the reality of the situation. So things like this had a tendency to get more out of control because there was a lot of other things I was doing at that age that were just bad decisions. Uh, that's a separate video. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to hear about my uh, colorful past one day, we can have a really good conversation about each of ours. Uh, but yeah, that that is really where it came from and it sort of grew and it developed into... I, I was anorexic, like completely anorexic for a little while. Let me, let me stop you a second. There's something you said in there. I, I just i am wondering, do you think that's common? You said you developed early in a certain way and a lot. Do you think it, do you think maybe women that develop earlier do have more, are more prone to have body images later because of the attention that was focused on them from such an early age? I didn't develop early. Right. At all. I, I mean, I'm still... Well, you said, that, you, said, you said in eighth grade, though, that you, you kind of started noticing your butt a little bit more. Yeah, I guess I don't really think of that. Like, I think You don't I, think of that as early then? No, 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 no. There's a lot of... I know girls, even when I was in school, there were girls who got their period in, like, fifth grade. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I was nowhere near getting my period at that right. point. I also... I th I'm pretty sure I always had a butt, because I was in gymnastics as a young oh, okay. kid, and so I was, like, pretty built <laughs> right. for a little kid. Um, and, and that's all... I mean, upper body strength, but also, like, your glutes and stuff are, like, rocks. <laughs> And then I went into dance and again, dance and butts kind of go hand in hand. So I think I always had a butt. It was just that that was around the time that for the area that I grew up in, kids kind of, it, it became a little more common for, I think, kids to start dating and start kind of noticing the opposite sex and things like that. So I really think it was more about that than it was about me suddenly developing. Okay. Me. How about that? Well, then you threw something else in just then. Do you think maybe that because you hear things about those particular studies, do you think any of the gymnastics and the dance led to body issue, image issues later? Because there is Ooh. sort of an expectation mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. you're in gymnastics and even more so in dance. Mm hmm yeah, there's uh, actually a lot of amazing videos on YouTube about that because I've, I've watched that before. And I actually even have a book from a long, long time ago called something like The Dancer's Diet. Right. <laughs> I still have it. it. It has some interesting ideas that are useful, but it's not... Uh, I, I would. It definitely is more of a uh, caloric restriction kind right. of route. Uh, so there's a lot around that that, and this video in general that is probably really triggering depending on where you're at. Um, but that surprisingly enough, I had some, like there are body image issues that are common with that. And you're, I mean, tights and leotards and stuff, like you can't hide anything right. <laughs> like being a surfer, a swimmer or something I would imagine. Um, 
but we had girls that were bigger than me and smaller than me on any of the teams that I was on. So I guess there was an element to me that felt a little more secure with that. It was actually a lot about boys and what I thought, oh, okay. what I thought boys liked and what I thought, uh, well, what I thought maybe like more at school, it was more focused on my experience actually with school, like locker room kind of stuff. Um, if I like, even like the, the bra or underwear types that I was picking, like if we're in the locker room and I'm like, oh, all the other girls have this style, I should probably get that. I don't want to be weird. <laughs> <laughs> Constantly trying to fit in, basically. Right. Um, I was kind of, before my parents divorced, I was like a total nerd, had never gotten a B, never not done my homework. Like <laughs> <laughs> it was a really like black and white, like day and night kind of situation when they got divorced. The person that I sort of turned into for a few years was the total opposite of that. Um, so I kind of felt like, but in, in my head, I was still like that nerdy girl that probably nobody wanted to be friends with, that probably wasn't cute, that nobody wanted to date, that uh, would never be popular. Like that in my head was still who I was. Although looking back at it, especially those rebellious years. <laughs> I don't really think that was necessarily reality. I just, I didn't have any self-esteem. I had zero confidence. Uh, so a lot about that was really just getting what I, what I thought, it was what I thought I needed to do to get other people to like me, even in a friendship sense. Um, but, but I think the romantic sense was like the driving factor. Um, so, so that was probably the, I mean, that's really how everything developed. And there were some elements that sort of came from that, like a, a short amount of time of anorexia, basically. Uh, and then a lot of more in like the bulimic direction, but I would actually do things like over-exercising or taking laxatives out of my mom's cabinet just to try and like get the food out quicker. Um, the over-exercising thing actually led to like a lot of hours on the um, elliptical was like my my <laughs> choice at the gym. I did a fair amount of like weight training too, but I loved going rollerblading. I would go running sometimes and then if I overate, I would just post up on the elliptical for like two or three hours <laughs> and I'd have all of the magazines that were further triggering my body in the tissue. <laughs> so I'd have a Cosmo and a 17. And I actually had a good time doing that because they're a little bit like a guilty pleasure kind of right. a thing because they're just like junk for your brain. Like you're not really learning anything useful. So um, that's what I would do. And I mean, it did keep me in shape more or less to the look that I wanted. And so I'm, I'm not going to say that it didn't work, but it wasn't a solution and it certainly wasn't healthy. And all of that, I'm sure, played a role in developing Crohn's later on because you're just kind of beating up your di digestive tract right. over and over and over. And definitely over. not sustainable over yeah. a long period of time. Yeah, yeah, not sustainable. Binge eating, I mean, like an obsession sort of with food that comes out of that. Uh, so, and then I, I was actually vegetarian for a while. Um, I think it was maybe the last two years of high school and then like the first year or two of college. Oh, wow. I was vegetarian. So I did bring, but I didn't really eat any fruit. I was kind of scared of carbs already, like at that age. So it was a lot of like veggie burgers and uh, a lot of omelets because that was like the <laughs> only thing I knew how to cook for myself and my sisters. And um, a lot, a lot of cut up vegetable snacks like Ziploc bags of carrots and cucumbers and stuff. If anyone who's watching this was in class with me, <laughs> I'm sure they remember this because I mean eating carrots is not quiet. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's pretty crunchy. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I mean I would snack on that stuff in class kind of like all day and then I didn't really do lunch. Like that was more of a hangout period with uh, friends. Right. And, it wasn't so much like a specific lunch or a specific meal. I just snacked on that kind of stuff all day. Um, but I, I mean, that really just, there was emotional eating and binge eating uh, that that evolved into as well. And then going vegan years ago, like five years ago, uh, I did lose quite a bit of weight. Uh, and I really liked how I looked. And... Um, 
through some different things that I've done over the five years and trying different styles of veganism and going through different stress levels and uh, trying to deal with things like anemia uh, after Crohn's and other, other things like that, um, <clears throat> hormone issues that came up, uh, I did put weight on. And so I would say, first and foremost, even now, like right in this minute, my body image issues are still, like, I'm still learning. I, it's still something that um, that I'm grappling with to a degree. Uh, it's not, a, the journey is not complete. Um, but it is, I can see a lot of progress. It is a lot better than where it was before. And really, ultimately, what what that comes from is my decision to place health above pretty much above everything else which I've done before but health actually above body image which right. I'm not sure I've done before maybe within the last year or even six months it's really pretty new for me uh, and the thing that I notice with that is that one it's a lot easier to be raw raw vegan when I'm just nurturing my body and giving it what it needs right. instead of trying to figure out okay how can i use this raw veganism to lose this weight that i want to lose as quickly as i can because i want it gone yesterday and then um so it's easier to be raw vegan but it's also m made me uh lose weight like but but not in a more sustainable way not in um in an unhealthy way not in an overnight kind of way uh, and at the same time, because there was a little bit more acceptance going on, I do feel like in general, I'm just kind of happier. Uh, and that's, that's a huge win. So with the raw food diet, I really, really recommend identifying if you have body image issues and realizing that that's not what you're doing raw for. You're not doing raw to exactly. try to look a certain way. You're not going to be some like five pound fairy princess. But, it's not gonna happen. and I've said this many, many <laughs> times on here, I, I thoroughly believe that if you always put health first mm. and you go for the health and that's what you're seeking, that your body's going to find where it's supposed to be. And yeah. I'm not talking any of that hippy dippy stuff about, oh, we just all kind of settle, but I'm actually meaning if you really are. Um, paying attention to what you're putting in your body and getting the nutrition that your body actually needs. Mm -hmm. I think the body, the way it looks, it, it'll work itself out. In other yeah. words, the health is going to produce. Yeah. The healthy, the true health is going to produce the best body that you can have. Yeah. And part of that is it, it might not be what you thought you wanted. With, like, like my body isn't necessarily what I thought I wanted when I was like 15. I mean, my boobs aren't getting any bigger. <laughs> they're, they're done growing. <laughs> um, so, and, and my hair isn't magically turning blonde by itself, you know? Like, so it's not that you suddenly have the body that you thought you wanted when you were sort of out of touch with your body to begin with because you weren't really aligned with who you were then anyways. It's that you start, your body improves. Right regardless because you're prioritizing your health but also that alignment with who you are and that acceptance of who you are is improving and things like journaling and meditation and uh, therapy I, I've I used an app called Talkspace I love my therapist I've been with her for like three years she's great huh. I, we're in maintenance mode now like things are pretty good but I have no intention of ever not having a therapist <laughs> Like, what about affirmations? Do you use affirmations? I've know other people I've heard that do have body image issues actually use affirmations to kind of, you know, trick that thing into their head. Yeah, uh, I, I've seen a lot of people benefit from that. For me, it wasn't really my path, but right. um, I think that a lot of people benefit from that. And I think, I mean, you may have seen some of my things that I moved here with. I do surround myself with like, I'm not the kind of person that stands in the mirror and says positive affirmations. All the time, on rare occasions, I, I might just look in the mirror and be like, yeah, hey. <laughs> right. But, uh, but I love uh, surrounding myself with things that feel uplifting. So, like, the 
the hooks that I use for like my keys or I'll put like my headphones on there, things that I grab quickly when I'm going out the door, they're on this thing that says like, hello, beautiful, like oh, nice. kind of these little reminders or I had something in my kitchen at my last place that was like about what being a family is all about. And it was about being yourself and being accepting and all of these kind of uplifting things. So I do think that in a sense, those are my affirmations okay. by sort of just because I... I'm a words person, so if I see something with words on it, I'm going to read it every time. Even if I've read that thing a thousand times, I still read it right. over and over again. Um, so so I think in that sense, maybe I've used some without really realizing it right. or in the traditional sense. Do you feel like you've ever had body image issues, like that superhero kind of a thing? Um, probably, but just when I was a kid, but then again, I was the fat kid. So you have a different it's dynamic, hard to believe. a different <laughs> dynamic going. Um, I, and it wasn't like I don't know. I wasn't like crushed or anything like that. It wasn't like I had this horrible childhood or whatever. We were a yeah. little bit more sorry. We were a little bit tougher back then. You know, if a kid made fun of you, you didn't lose your mind. No, but in all seriousness, yeah. I mean, but I lost my weight in about the sixth or the seventh grade. But oh yeah, I mean, you know, I always went to the gym and stuff. So you were always looking for that shirt that made your arms look bigger. <laughs> Or made your chest look bigger. Mm -hmm. And I, w I can relate to what you were saying about some of the guys because, yeah, I mean, I was in the gym. I was a beast in the gym back when I was younger. And, uh, yeah, you were always trying to get that V and you were look, trying to wear clothes or, mm -hmm. put, you know, kind of pose yourself where you had that. So yeah. I would say I had them, but they were just kind of more or less, I think, they weren't much of a, fa a huge factor in my life. Yeah. I think if anything, being a fat kid, it just was like, I pretty much said in my head from an early age on after I lost that weight the first time, I said, won't ever be like that again. <laughs> and I think that's why I always had like a ceiling on my weight. Like oh. I, I probably have gained 200 pounds over my lifetime, just like everybody. It was just, I always had men mentally, I had like a ceiling, like, mm -hmm. and I don't necessarily mean a particular weight, but how I looked. In other words, when I got to a certain level, that was it, and we never went above that. So there was yeah. some yo-yoing, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I've def I definitely had them. Yeah, but I don't think I don't think to the sense that they did anything. You know, really weighed on me all that much. Yeah, I sort of had a ceiling too, um, but it was. I mean, it was a combination of a few things where it was, for the most part, even when I was eating like really really overeating there was just still sort of a limit to how f how much weight that would cause me to gain anyways because uh, I would have had to have somehow eaten even more than that to gain right. even more than that and that was beyond what I craved even at any point um, the other thing is that <laughs> we were talking about this like I, I don't know how common this is for for men but I know a lot of women we we have clothes that are maybe more fitted. This is probably not the best example, but we have a lot of clothing that it fits if we're a certain size. And if we lose more than five pounds or gain more than five pounds, like there's a little window and it goes either direction, but all of a sudden then it doesn't <laughs> fit. <laughs> and then we just like can't wear it. And the experience of not being able to wear like anything in your closet is so freaking frustrating. So I definitely have like kind of my like, okay, I'm feeling heavier today. I feel bigger in my body today. I have certain clothes for that. I have certain clothes for days when I feel lighter. And then lots and lots of clothes where I feel like this is my size most of the time. But there's kind of like backup plans built right. in. Because <laughs> like, <laughs> it just, it doesn't go well if you, if, if your weight changes for whatever reason. If, if you're, I mean, I was pretty depressed last year after losing my dog. Or if you go through a breakup or if you're any kind of emotional eater, you change your diet or your hormones or whatever. Uh, <laughs> gaining or losing five pounds can like start to be pushing it with some of the styles that we wear. Right. So we're, kind of in trouble you just don't have anything <laughs> to wear anymore and if you're already feeling a little bummed that'll make you way more depressed <laughs> not being able to just even put anything on so uh, yeah I, I'm curious how many of you guys do that with your closet women or men if, if anyone else does that because I know quite a few women who do <laughs> I do have a couple. I do have a couple of pairs of jeans that I don't dry. Like you were talking mm. about, not drying things because yeah. they. 
I'm not so sure if that's my body changing though, it's just the practicality of my clothes shrinking up like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's really everything on the topic. I would say that I'm, again, I want to reiterate that I'm still learning. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a dietitian or a nutritionist. I'm not trained in any of this. Um, I'm still learning. What really worked for me was... Exactly. And with these particular issues, there are sometimes, should be stressed that there are points where you actually need to talk to somebody or get some help. Yeah. Like that, because I, you know, there are a lot of, uh, most, more women, but some men that have body image issues that just basically, they control their lives mm -hmm. and they do unhealthy things to change that image or whatever. So yeah, mm -hmm. just like she's saying, we're not experts. Definitely anytime you have, feel like something like that, don't be afraid to reach out yeah. to a support group, a professional or whatever. Even just situations like, like overeating, um, Overeaters Anonymous, it, yeah. it wasn't the ultimate solution for me when I tried it, but it was, uh, I think that it was an important step for me. It was just something that carried me a little further on my path. And it is very supportive in the sense that it's something you can rely on at any time of right. the day or night, any time zone. Uh, and if there's any, like, eating disorder involved, I really, really think professional help is in your best interest. I would argue that it's it's important and extremely urgent at that point. Uh, you really don't want to live your life that way, especially because the longer that you go that way, the more likely that you are to develop issues down the road that you're spending years fixing, like I am. Um, nutritional deficiencies, microbiome that's totally out of whack and, and just not uh, working properly. There's all kinds of things, your hormones. Uh, so it's just not worth how long that uphill battle will be once you finally decide I can't do this anymore. Uh, True. It's really not worth it. Well, thanks for sharing that, Amanda. Mm -hmm. That was a good one today. I hope you all guys enjoyed that out there. If you like it, please give us a thumbs up and we'll see you again soon when Amanda gets back from Florida. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>